Hold on to your hats, folks, as this is just about the most mind-blowing, earth-shattering thing that you will see today. Maybe even in your lifetime. Here it is, an absolute work of art that I like to call a YouTube progress bar. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create one of your own, just like my friend Percy did to blow up his YouTube channel. Okay, I may have overhyped this one a little bit, but still, this little bar could be a great addition to your channel and genuinely lead to faster growth. But just like Percy, you may be thinking, well, why would I use a progress bar? How can it help my channel? So let me explain. To grow on YouTube, you need to provide viewer satisfaction. Ultimately, keep them watching your videos for as long as possible. No easy task in a world where we're distracted by everything. For example, if Percy just waffles on for 25 minutes straight about life on the farm, with no structure, then let's face it, no matter how pink and cute he is, you're not subscribing to that crap. Which is why it can really pay to have a solid structure to your videos, and it's that structure that aligns perfectly with progress bars. Now breaking your video down into sections helps the viewer and in turn helps your channel. Let's say Percy had created a video called 5 Reasons I Love Mud. We know that there's likely to be an intro, 5 individual reasons and maybe an outro too. By adding a progress bar the viewer can visually break down the video and that helps them move from one section to another mentally. It satisfies their expectations and keeps everything bite sized and manageable. If they get bored of Percy explaining reason number three, then they skip ahead to reason number four, which is much better than them just bouncing out of your video completely. Ultimately, the viewer's goal is to start and finish your video, otherwise why would they have clicked on it? And the progress bar is there as a visual guide to show them how far off completion they are as we encourage them through the video step by step. Now for this tutorial I'm going to use Wondershare Filmora to create my progress bar but what I'm going to teach you is the same technique that you can use in most video editing applications. I just prefer to use Filmora because it's simple for beginners, full of features and very affordable. It's my go-to video editor but keep watching no matter what editor you use. First let's start with the most basic way that you can achieve this and then we'll jazz it up a little bit. So I've just opened Filmora and I've imported my uh, video for Percy to pick. So I'm just going to drag that into the timeline and I'm just going to zoom in slightly. Now, if I'm doing anything in Filmora here that you don't understand because you've never seen it before, just, just like the basics of how to navigate, what the different options and menus are, don't worry too much. I've also created a video that's like half an hour long and it covers everything that a beginner would need to learn to get started with Filmora. If you look in the description and I'll link to it at the end of this video, that'll really help you just learn the basics and get started. So I've just dragged the video in and as you can see we've got this timeline here so most video editors you progress through the video and this preview window will show you exactly where we are in that video. So as we click along you can see how this uh, this bar's moving and it, the scenes are changing in this preview window. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on sample colour. Now I'm going to take one of these sample colours and I'm just going to click and then drag it into the timeline and I'm going to drag it above the video. Now the way video editing works is it's usually in tracks or layers. So think of it like layers on a cake. The top layer is always going to be the most visible. So if I click on this point in the timeline, all you can see there is that purple colour that we've just dropped in. The video is underneath it. So if I click along a little bit, there's no purple there and you can see the video. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hover over the edge of this purple colour, click and drag the mouse all the way to the end. So believe it or not, this purple is actually our progress bar. Now it doesn't look much like a progress bar because it fills the screen. So if I click on it, we get these little squares in the corners and at the top and bottom and we use them to resize it. So I'm just going to click on this top square and then hold the mouse down and just drag it down. And again, I can do the same with the bottom one. and It just resizes it a little bit. So that looks more like a progress bar and I'm just going to click and then drag it down to the bottom of the video. So as you can see, if I click at any point now in this video, we've got that purple bar. But you'll notice it's not doing anything, it's just a solid bar all the way across, it's not actually progressing. So to make it progress, we're actually going to add an animation style. Now if I double click on this purple or right click and show properties, then I'm going to get various different properties that are specific just to that one element. Now there's an animation tab in there, I'm just going to click on that. And then I'm just going to double click on this slide right. 
So you can probably see from the preview window then what this does is exactly like it says on the tin. It will basically reveal this purple element by sliding it from the left to the right. Now you can see here it's added this little circle. Now if we click and drag that all the way across, that is how long it will take to carry out that transition. So if I put that right at the end, that means that for the whole duration of this video, it's going to spend slowly bringing this bar in from the left to the right, which is a progress bar. So if I click at any point, in fact, if I click and just drag this, you'll see the progress bar moving. So you can see there we're about quarter of the way through, halfway through the video, three quarters, and then to the end. So basically, we've just achieved what we wanted to set out to do. We've got a progress bar that goes across the screen. Once it reaches the end, that's the end of your video. But there's a slight problem with that. What that's not taken into account is all of the different sections and the whole structure of the video. So we might have an intro that lasts 20 seconds. We might have step one that lasts one minute and step two that lasts three minutes. So it's not going to be as uniform as that. What we want to do is put some visual clues on here and then break it down so that this bar progresses at different rates. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that now. Now I'm just going to use Canva for this next bit because I use Canva for pretty much anything and everything that involves graphics and art. But you, you use whatever that you want to use, it doesn't really make any difference. So I'm just going to click on video because I want it to be the same aspect ratio of video. I'm just going to click on this create blank one here. Now what I'm going to do is at the bottom I'm just going to add like almost like a timeline. I'm going to add the different elements and structure of our video. I'll show you exactly what I mean. So we'll start with some text. And we can change this to whatever we want. I'm going to go with like a tall and, um, and, and narrow font. So possibly Anton. I'm going to go for that one actually. Be Bass New. I'm going to make that bold. I'm going to drag that down to the bottom where our timeline would be. And then I'm just going to press control I'm going to press control and C and then control and V to copy and paste. Or you can right click and copy, right click, paste. Whatever's easiest for you. And then if you think about that structure of your video, this is where you'd either type in the different headings or you can just put step 1, step 2, step 3, step 4, whatever it is that you're doing. I'm just going to repeat that for each heading that we've got. Now, as you can see, these are all over the show. There's no spacing at all. So I'm just going to click and, and drag the mouse so that I select all of them. And then at the top, there's this position button. So position, and I'm going to do space evenly, and I'm going to do that horizontally. And then I'm also going to align them so they're all equal distance apart and all aligned nicely and then I'm just going to center them as well so that's looking okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add like a little line just to separate these as well so let's just go into elements and lines and shapes I'm just going to pinch that line there I'm going to shorten it a little bit and I'm going to rotate it as well 90 degrees and then we'll just drag that down and just move it around till you're happy and then I'm just going to click on it and again right click copy and paste and then just drag them into the middle of these you'll see that Canva always gives you these like purple dotted lines as well just to give you an idea of whether it's lined up Now you can do exactly the same, you can change the positioning of them, but I think that looks fairly good, so I'm just going to keep it like that. The only thing I might do is just make them a little bit bigger, just to drag them out a little bit so they're filling the entire screen a bit more. Now one other thing to consider is what video you're putting these onto. Now I actually want to change the colour of these so that they're white, so I'm just going to highlight them all and then change the colour at the top to white. Now that worked for the lines, but it didn't work for the fonts, which was useful. So let's just go through and do the fonts separately. There we go. Now you're going to think, there's nothing on that screen, John. But if we just change the background colour to black, 
you can see that it, it, it is there. I'm not pulling any kind of Jedi mind tricks here or wizardry. Um, but I'm just going to get rid of that black again. So now I'm going to download this. And like I say, if I just drag that, you can see at the bottom there is something there. I'm going to press download. And I'm going to change it to PNG file. Because PNG files, you can put a transparent background on. Which means we will only see the bits that we've just created. And all of this white will be invisible. Which is exactly what we need. Now one thing I should say is there are different ways of doing this, but if you don't have Canva Premium or you don't have any other art packages or graphic packages that you're comfortable with, you won't have this transparent background. If you see there, it's a Canva Premium um, option, which I have. So all I need to do is tick that and download it. But if you don't have that, I'll show you a workaround in a second. So I'm just going to go to the Media tab and I'm going to find that file that we've just downloaded to our laptop. I'm going to drag it over. Now, if I just, for demonstration purposes, just quickly show you. There you go. Do you see how it's only showing the bits that we created and it's not showing any of that white background? Now, let's say that you don't have Canva Premium and you don't have any other way that you can create a transparent image. You've not got any other programs or software. You can actually do a similar thing just using Filmora. I just prefer using it that way. But if you go into Titles... And then you've got all these different titles, basically text that you can use. Find the one that's called default title and click and drag that in. What you can then do is just type in the text in here. So we could have intro and then put some spaces in as well, but make sure your spaces are the same for each word. Step one. I'm just going to change the font size right down. It's like I say, that's another way of doing it. I just prefer using Canva. So there's always different ways to do anything. But again, you can add that in the bottom. If you need more spaces, then you can go back in and you can just add them in here and play around with it until you're happy that it looks um, just right for what you need. I'm going to go back to the one that we created in Canva though. So... I'm going to drag that down slightly. So I'm quite happy with that now. I'm happy with how it looks on the video. The only thing I'll probably do is just make that purple bar ever so slightly bigger. Now, you can probably see what I'm talking about now, can't you? Where people can look at your video and they've got that kind of um, awareness of what the next stage is and they can move through the video at a certain pace. It just helps keep them engaged and um, kind of focused on the video and like say if the if they get bored halfway through step one they know that in a matter of seconds they're going to be in step two so it almost eases them through the video now I'm going to drag that right to the start of our video and then I'm going to expand it by clicking on the edge and again let's make it the same length as the video I'm also going to create a new layer as well so I'm going to click on this button here and click add video track and I'm going to drag that intro upwards now, there's a reason for this, and I'll show you in a second. So let's just say, for example, that on our purple bar, let's, uh, let's move it to one side. As that bar is revealing along, you've just got the background. Now, I'm going to create a duplicate of this purple bar just to make the background look a bit neater. So let me just undo the changes I just made. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on this purple bar. I'm going to click on copy. I'm going to click on this layer and I'm going to click on paste and then just drag that across. So we've now got two purple bars. With the bottom one, we're going to change the transparency. Now we do that by going into the properties, clicking on this button and just change that opacity. In fact, what I'll do, just so we can see what it does, I'll just hide that track for a second. So, if we just change the opacity, you'll see. See how it starts going kind of like clear? So let's just do it nice and faint like that. And then I'm just going to show this one again. So next step is we want the progress bar to go through to each one. Now, it could be that at different points in your video, this, this makes an assumption that if we did that original bar where it goes from start to finish in one go, that makes the assumption that all of these are the exact same length of video, and they're not going to be. They're going to be different lengths. I'm going to show you how we do that with a thing called keyframes. So I'm just going to browse over to the start and make sure that we've got this top 
purple bar gradient um, actually selected. Now there's a button here called keyframes. So I'm just gonna click on that. So when we go into this keyframe section, what we need to do is just move the timeline to the beginning of the video. Now what I'm gonna do is, you know this layer that we've got where we've got all the words, I'm just gonna move that up. I'm gonna keep it in line so it fills the width. I'm just gonna move it up slightly just so that I can get to this bottom um, kind of purple gradient. So I'm just gonna double click on that so it's selected. And then I'm gonna click and drag it all the way over to the left. Now do you see how that just kind of popped up into full screen mode again? Filmora sometimes does this, so if it does it, just resize it again. Drag it all the way back down so it's the same height as the one before. I don't know why it does that, whether it's a bug or whether it's me doing something wrong, could well be. And then drag it over and it won't do that again. And we're just gonna drag it just so it's right at the very start. There you go, so it's literally clicked there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it to the end of our intro. So we've got this, um, if you remember, we've got that line on there as well to, to show the start of each section. So on our video, we'd then know where the intro ends. So let's say for example's sake, the intro ends there. We then go to the purple gradient and we're just gonna click and drag it across so it lines up with that intro there. And you see how it's created this arrow. So that's basically saying that from off the screen to this is gonna take that long. Now let's just say step one is really short. So let's just say in the video, that's the end of step one. So we again, we go back to this purple gradient, this purple bar, and we then drag it to the end of step one. And you see how this part is shorter. Now let's say step two is actually quite a long piece. So let's say step two is there. It's literally like 40 odd seconds into the video. So again, we're gonna click and we're gonna drag it to this step two. And I'm just gonna repeat that for the other steps as well. And then when you get right to the end, literally click as far as you can go so that you can still see the video and drag that all the way across. Now, if you have a look in the uh, timeline editor there, you can see how each section is a different length. Now, what that'll do is that progress bar, instead of running at one continuous speed and assuming that all of these are the same length, it will vary that speed so that it kind of ties in together with each of the different sections. Now, what I also need to do is just go back to that text layer that we created earlier and just drag that back down into position. So once we're done, if I just click on this timeline editor, you can now see that we've got the uh, words and the different sections as a top layer. Underneath that, we've got a purple bar that is gonna complete and scroll across as the video goes through each section. And underneath that, there's a more clearer um, purple bar that's got a bit of opacity. And the reason we use that is because it shows that it's being completed, it shows that progress. So it just visually looks a little bit nicer. And if I just let go and we'll just press play on that last bit, you'll see it quickly goes through step five because that was a really short little step. And then it goes to the end. So there you have it. Why not try that for some of your videos? See if they have a positive effect for your viewers. If you've just watched this and feel like you need some help with the basics of film or video editing, then the next video is perfect for you, even if you're a beginner.